Hi everyone, Mikey Bly here and today we are back once again with Lake of Voices. Now I only had one more route I wanted to try and take with Bemele and Lou in our party still. Um, it's the bit where you have the chance to throw the lantern. I'm going to say no. I'm not going to do anything no. I'm just going to let what happen happens and I want to see if we can convince him to take hey. all of the medicine this time and see what happens. Okay, wait a second. Same. Same. We have yep, yep, yep. So this time I need to... Yep, we need to fight our way through. The... Uh, let's Is fight. To... So that's how we all get on the I'm bridge. So we'll get there, and then... Okay, I'm saving here this time. So here's our save. Save number five is our talisman at the moment. And we'll see what happens, if anything. Different. Such reckless... Yeah, yeah, we've, we've had Normally. this. Blah, 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 blah. We need to start walking. Yep, and then he's going to go, oops! Are you alright? Uh, I'm going to skip to where, well, wait a I minute. Tended to it, Mike. Are you? Not like. Uh-huh. I have. Yep. Drinking this one. Uh-huh. Is that safe? My leg isn't broken. What about side effects? You didn't say what they were. Okay, Bebele weighing it with the same kind of worries that we had before without him with us. Oh, Bemele steps in closer to the guide, his question harsh enough to be a demand. Bemele's trust in the guide has steadily declined since the first night. It's steadily declined since we first met him. So, with the way he's acting, I cannot ignore the sense that it may come to a head before the journey is over. Yes, possibly, probably. The guide levels a deeply unimpressed look at Bemele. He then sighs, raising the bottle up so that it's more visible. He swishes it almost impatiently. It can slow reflexes and cloud the mind. Yep. Immediately, Bemele's eyes widen incredulously. Yep, this is the I same. I'll only be taking half, half a dose. You know how you feel about other. I'm saving again. I'm saving. I'm saving again. Bemele takes another heavy step forward. He meets the guide's eyes stonily. No, you can't drink something like that. I'll carry you. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. Could you imagine the guy like, yeah, sure, whatever. Then. And Batman's like, okay, piggyback time. Wee! It's not going to happen. Oh, God. Batman presses forward, encroaching on the guide's personal space. The guide visibly shrinks back again. However, he can't hobble much farther away due to his injured leg. What if Batman forces him into a piggyback situation? It's not something that either Margaret or Lou could have done, but Batman can. That won't. Before the guy can put forth another word, Bemele brays and he snatches the bottle straight from his hand. Everyone is stunned to silence by Bemele's action. Even the guide has trouble expressing any sort of emotion beyond furious disbelief. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Bemele's like, nah, that's not happening. Bemele ignores all of our reactions and smiles triumphantly, holding the bottle like a trophy. Uh, 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 uh. You have made it very clear that at the first inconvenience... You would leave us all for dead in the water. As you are now, that is impossible. Shit, Bemela has turned this on its head. He knows the guide's in a vulnerable position now. And without the medicine, oh my god, Bemele, you rascal. Also, what are you doing? The guide narrows his eyes at Bemele, who only gives him a taunting grin. So, this isn't about any possible adverse effects. You want to leave me injured and immobile on purpose. This is bonkers. But you know what? I'm kind of loving it. Bemele shrugs, then returns to smirking almost cockily. Do I have to make a decision as to whether to give the medicine back or not? Shit, is that a choice we have to make? If there were no side effects, I likely would have thought nothing of it. However, mentioning those risks triggered something in my mind. You've never done what's best for the group. You only choose the safe option for yourself. Uh, that's one way of looking at it. But I don't know. I'm still kind of erring on the side of the guide with all of the stuff that's happened. Like, 
Yes, he's been called. Yes, he's kind of just shrugged off people's deaths. But he's seen this happen so many times. And he knows these bridges, like, practically like the back of his hand. And I think he's purely only doing the, what's in... Yeah, it might be his best interest. But he is the guide. If he dies, then... People are going to wander on the bridges like fools and die left, right and centre. I don't know. I'm still on the guide side, but I don't know if I should be. I, I, I really don't know at this point. I, I, maybe I'm, I'm too... I bow to authority, authority figures too easily. I think that's my issue. But it will be interesting to see what happens here because the guide is technically now powerless unless he manages to snatch the medicine back or I step in. That's the only two things I can see. I can't see Lou arguing about this. Lou's very kind of passive, really. It's hard to get anything out of him. With that in mind, I can't exactly trust you when you tell us that the medicine is truly our one option. Now, even if carrying you means that you will be more at risk than otherwise, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Sheesh. Jeez, this is different. Emily chuckles derisively and rolls his eyes while spinning the medicine file between his fingers. Oh god, what are you turning into? I kind of, I was kind of enjoying it, but now I'm like, okay, but don't, don't, don't turn all taunty. That's not going to end up good for anybody. I hope you're proud that I'm following your advised method of not considering others, guide. Good grief. This is taking, this is getting too much. Can you just shut up now and just do what you're going to do? Despite Memele's sarcastic jab, the guide returns to his usual empty, deadpan expression and makes no attempt at rebuttal. I think he knows he's kind of screwed on this one. There, he accepts it. What of you? Oh god, I have to. I do have to make the decision. Okay, here we go. We're going to drop another save here, and we can use this as a branch. Because I want to say, yeah, whatever, don't let him take the medicine. But then if it goes wrong, we can start another branch here where we do let him take it. If, that, if those are the options... Emily then turns to look at us curiously. Lou has looked away from the situation. I notice, however, that he's trying to hide a smirk growing on his lips. Oh, Lou's all for it. Lou's loving it. Well, the guide, the guide told Lou that he wasn't fit to cross the bridges, right? So he's probably loving the guide being in a vulnerable position like this. Bemele seems rather pleased by the reactions thus far, grinning widely at us. If anyone is worried about my ability to carry the guide for the rest of the night, you shouldn't be. Rest assured, a willowy man like the guide won't slow me down whatsoever. A willowy man. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I can imagine being very weeping willow, like draped over Bemele's shoulders, kind of sh like slumped, kind of like, fine, whatever. <laughs> he puffs his chest out proudly. Okay, just stop, you child. Luke places his face into his hands, refusing to look Bemele's way. Through his fingers, a glimpse of a grin still remains. Yeah, he just do not want to burst out laughing. He just want to get on the guy's bad side. Bemele faces me expectantly. The guide also levels a steely gaze in my direction. Okay. Alright, let's save again because the decision hasn't happened yet. We may be having a bit of fun getting the upper hand on the guide for a change, but if we don't go back now, we never will. Though, do we truly need to? All that matters is reaching the shore safely. What really is for the best in this situation? Well, we kind of know. We've seen this without Bemele with us. Remember when it was us, Margaret, and Lou? And the guy was, he took the medicine regardless, right? And he end, we ended up in the shit, essentially. But again, we didn't try and convince him to take a full dose. And I don't know if he would... I don't know if he would do that if, if pressed on the matter. Because I didn't try and press it. That's our other possible option if this goes wrong. But for now, I'm like, I'm going to let Bemele just take the lead on this one. I'm just going to say that could work. Bemele's grin widens ecstatically at my lack of resistance. The guide's lost all respect for me now. We learned that the guide has some kind of respect for us when he offered, you know, when the lanterns all knacked last time and he was like, oh, well, Kika's the one I'm taking because Kika's most likely to survive. But that's out the window now. He's probably like, screw all of you. Who's to say he'll still guide us though? Oh, he will because he has to survive. Yes, it's in his best interest, isn't it? Yeah. I feel nerves turning my insides jittery as I think over something so drastic. No matter the fear, this has to be done. Even if the guide can be trusted to show us the correct path, he's not reliable when it comes to anything else. If we let him do as he wishes, it's very possible that at some point during this night he will leave us to die. So, if, 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 and this is still a big if because I haven't really cracked the 
puzzle of this one. If we can get to the end of the first night with everybody. With us, Bemele, Margaret and Lou. If. If that's actually achievable. Is this a story path that we can then take? And if this story path leads to us surviving, all of us. Then that might be the one to take when we get to this point with everybody. If. If we can get here with everybody, like, I don't know, I'm, I've am i got experimenting to do in this game still. There is still work to be done and things to be tried. But for now, this is a very interesting turn of events. I believe you are capable of carrying the guide to the other side. That seems like the least risky option we have for the group at large. Well, because you think about it, right? The guide still got his lantern. I still have my lantern. The guide's light will be practically right over Bemele. It's their light because it's right, like, practically... Yeah, one person distance because it's one person on someone else's shoulders. And I have my lantern for me and Lou. And we can stick kind of close to each other now. Although the guy can't even complain now if we all stick close to each other, can he? But that could be a problem with the bridges when they go wonky donkey. This is the issue. This is the issue because the guide's good at navigating this stuff. But without being actually footfalls on the bridge, he might not be able to direct us as easily. We'll see. Bemele lets out a small triumphant laugh and tosses the vial over to me. I catch it and quickly tuck it away in my pocket. I'll return it to its rightful owner once we've made it to the shore. I honestly thought he was going to just lob it straight into the lake, to be honest. Bemele steps back up to the guide's side, who still shrinks slightly beneath him. The guide narrows his eyes as Bemele grows near. Fret not. I will take proper care to lift you. This isn't the first time I've carried an injured travelling partner. I'll have to hoist you over my shoulder since we've still got a ways to go. I ask that you don't make too much of a fuss about it. I'm sure he will, but hopefully not too much. The guide stares at him plainly. I'm hardly in a position to resist. You've taken away my ability to do anything but be dependent on you and your decisions. Uh, you're still the one who's going to tell us which way to go. So you're still in charge of the guiding. Don't worry about that. We're not just going to go running across these planks willy-nilly. Don't, don't, don't fret. You'll still do your job. And we'll do ours. Surviving. Or at least trying to. Even though this path was only taken because I am not someone you care for rather than true pragmatism... It is a better mindset to have on these bridges than how you've acted thus far. Interesting. Bemele snorts out a sarcastic laugh. Thank you for your approval. Ah, uh, that's a very interesting opinion from the guide. He was totally just well on the way to just taking the medicine and just doing whatever he felt like doing. He's actually that tiny little bit of respect for forcing the issue. The guide's a very, very strange character. Very hard to read. He bends down and grabs the guide, lifting him over his shoulders. Bemele is careful not to bump the guide's legs. He still winces in pain, clenching his staff tightly as he's jostled back and forth. However, the arrangement is quickly settled and Bemele is ready to begin walking with the guide in tow. Lou again doesn't say anything, quietly surveying the situation. He seems far more nervous now that the option they laughed over is a reality. I must trust that his worries will not come to pass. Continue down this bridge. We cannot remain here any longer. Okay, cool. I have made this decision. I'm going to save in this branch because this is practically this save here, six. You can't see my cursor. I keep forgetting. Slot six was basically only one route left at that point. So I'm going to save over that one. And this is going to be our this path. Let's see what happens. Bemele gives him a nod and starts to walk across the soggy boards as the new head of the group. We walk along the bridges together in the stillness. The guide's occasional instruction of what paths to take is the only conversation that reverbs in the night. Our steps echo throughout the bridges and I'm more acutely aware of just how many paths there are spread across the lake than ever. Even the voices of the lake are quiet, but it's no consolation for in their place is the otherworldly squishing sounds of the prowlers contorting their aquatic forms across the boards. It's impossible to tell exactly where they're coming from, the sound seems to echo in every direction at once. I would just not like this situation. Every time there's a discussion about the prowlers and the noises they make, and when you're walking through kind of a foggy, misty evening across treacherous bridges with multiple paths, oh, I would just lose my mind so quickly. All I know is that it's too close for comfort. Yep, I do my best to ignore the feeling, but the sound still fills me with a constant lingering dread. 
Ah, this is the awkward bit. This is the wobbly bridge. This is this is the this is going to get interesting because this is where not having the guide's feet on the floor might cause us some issues. Eyeing the dubious bridge wearily, I grow nervous at the idea of getting that close to the edge. Bemelay's pace slows before coming to a stop directly in front of the foreign way. For once, he looks to the guide for this matter. The guide appraises the bridge, looking intensely down the path ahead. Normally, it would be possible to cross a narrow bridge if one is careful with how they step. We can't continue as we are. Our combined weight is too much. That was my fear. He's carrying the guide, therefore... Heaviness becomes a factor. Is there another path? This is our path. <sighs> Shit. Okay, well, this is a fact. This is something I didn't factor in. I'm going to save again. Bemelay's eyes widen at the explanation before gritting his teeth and speaking with a tone coated with suspicion. No, no, we've seen this, though. I know he doesn't know that. He died. He, he died before. <laughs> he doesn't know this. But we do. So, you knew from the start we'd reach a point where putting you down was the only option. Yeah, but if you think about it... I don't know. Maybe he needs the medicine. The guide's silence is confirmation enough for Bemele. He scoffs derisively, then purposefully strides forward, planting his feet on the mouth of the narrowed bridge. Unfortunately, that plan isn't going to work. I may not look the part, but I'm quite light on my feet. If this is our path, then prepare to cross it with me. Oh, boy. Okay, let's... The guide still does not speak. He looks completely unfettered. Bemelay doesn't take kindly to the guide's dismissiveness. He lifts his boot for a second time, stretching it out ahead of his body and threatening to move even further down the narrow way. He's trying to see. He's trying to make the guide crack. He's trying to make sure that the guide's not lying about this bridge. He is bluffing, isn't he? I've known Bemele for a few years now, and I wouldn't assume even his recklessness would go this far. Yet I cannot help but hold concerns. One wrong step could mean the end for both, regardless of how serious his intentions are. Has this gotten out of hand? For only a second I catch the guide looking my way. The moment I realise it, however, he's returned to staring down Bemele. Do it. To die on these boards is my fate. What difference is there should it be today or tomorrow? It is only those you are trying to protect who will suffer. Have we got another choice coming? We might have another choice coming here. And we might have to start a new branch again. Bemelis snarls under his breath, but puts his foot down where it originally was. He then even takes a few steps back, his head lowered in defeat. It seems we have no choice. I reach into my pocket to take out the vial belonging to our guide. Bemele places the guide back onto the ground as I hand the medicine toward him. Whoa, he takes it from me and downs the entire dose almost instantly. Okay, so he didn't only take half though. He's taken all of it this time. But because because he took half a dose earlier on on the bridges in the other playthrough when he had the medicine, maybe it was he was groggier because it had been longer. Now that he's only just taken it, he might still be fresh-ish for a while. Fresh enough to get us over this bit, maybe? I thought you were only going to take half. Yeah, don't worry about it, Bemele. It's too late now. We drank all of it. The less medicine I drink, the longer it takes to have an effect. Our time is even more limited thanks to how much was wasted on your little game. Oops. We had to drink it all so we could move forward. It should be fine. Should. It should be fine. Well, at least we've already moved a bit. Uneasy and regretful glances are shared throughout our party. None is showing more of those emotions than Bemele. We'd be forced to accept that, for better or worse. On Sinlos, the guide decides all. It is disheartening. At the very least, the guide gains his mobility back in short order, as he assured us. I shake off the heaviness of what happened and put my focus on the task ahead. I give a firm look to my travelling partners in hope they'll feel the same. With no further discussion, the guide smoothly glides across the bridge in the centre until his effortless walk brings him to where the boards widen again. See? When he took the medicine last time, he was all wah, 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 on this bit, right? He's a lot more assured this time. Now it's our turn, and with only a single lantern chair between us, we have to be mindful of how to cross without leaving anyone in darkness. But we still have the same issue. The same issue that we had before. We've had no choices yet, so I'm going to save again. Excuse me for that, but I'm just trying to play it safe. I will stay in the middle. 
One of you will lead while the other goes behind. So is this still the same old shit then? Someone's still going to fall, right? Oh wait, no, 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 no. Because we had Bemelay and Lou before, right? And if Bemelay goes front, if his foot goes through the bridge again, we don't rush to stop him, right? Uh-huh. And then we all make it past. But this time my lantern's not broken. So my lantern shouldn't go out this time. So we shouldn't have to leave anybody else behind. Okay. I don't think... I didn't make a choice on this last time, did I? I think it just happens. I can take the front. Yeah, okay. There's no decision to be any made. trouble. Yep. So... If this is the same, Bemele will go through the bridge, but I can just, just, just let it happen. Oh, wait, is this... Wait, hang on. The weight of all of us. Okay, hang on. We need to focus on keeping ourselves centered. We can't let the bridge tilt. Okay. I can't leave Lou behind. There's no way for him to go with no other source of light nearby. Bemele could try going by himself while we keep still. We aren't close enough to the guide for Bemele to remain in light completely, however, with only him moving. Hopefully the bridge will remain stable enough for him to cross it quickly. With him safe on the other side, we will have an easier time keeping the bridge from bending again. Yeah, this is the same. Oh, no. I think this is another one of those scenarios, again, where it doesn't matter what we do, we lose somebody. Hang on, let's try this. Okay, Bemele listens to me intently. A look comes over his face and it's clear that he's not fond of the idea of leaving us behind. I shake my head and urge him to go. Having one less person on this bridge will be beneficial for everyone, Bemele. Lou keeps quiet, a silent agreement towards the plan. Okay. Extreme enough tilt on advance anyone. Oh! As close as I would study a twisted backwards arm glossy with blackened water burst from the side and latches on a Bemele's leg. Oh, great. Bemele! Are you fucking joking me? This game is... I'm so tired of this. I'm so sick of this. Should we keep going? And this is... This is going to be too much. We lose somebody in the water this way. Yes. We need to move forward. If someone... Ugh. Yep. Stop. And someone goes, would it be Lou? And this... Fuck, it doesn't... Oh. There's nothing we could do. It doesn't matter which fucking route I take. We lose somebody again. Fuck! I'm going to. All oh, right. I'm trying to skip here. I want to skip. Why can't I? There we go. I'm so annoyed. Ah! Whatever. Just get us to the other fucking side again. Is there any guide? Our way has been taken from us. Oh, wait. We need to find another bridge before the sun rises. Listen to me. Oh, it's because he took more of the medicine, right? Wait, hang on a second. Wait, hang on. So we've got... Let's just check this. Yep, okay, we'll get over there. That's the same. Ba -ba -ba. It's the same, same. Yep, we get the silhouette of the shore. Unbelievable, blah, blah, blah. A dead end. Okay, so this is the difference. I gasp at the sight. It sunk. Why? Why did this bridge have to fall now? The shore is there. I see it right in front of my eyes. And then we just try to get the guide. Staring ahead. Yeah, it's because he's, 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 he's knackered because he took the whole doors. Finally, the guide stirs from my harsh calls. He speaks in a distant sort of way as if he were in a trance. 
This bridge didn't sink. It was never the path to the shore. And yet here we are. Because he was, because he's too doped up. He, he wasn't able to guide us. What? I took the wrong way. We can't reach the shore. Oh no. I wonder, how much of this was a mistake? Uh, all of it. All of it was a mistake. Have you lost your damn mind? This cannot be happening. It can't. He took us the wrong way and he did it intentionally. The medicine. It robbed him of logic. Or perhaps it is his will that was lost. If he had taken less, would this not have happened? Or was it over as soon as I left him to the Nixie while on the shore? My mind begins to race with a million other questions, but I snap myself out of it. There is only one pressing matter to attend to at this moment in time. I forcefully grab the guy by his shoulder and make him turn towards us. You need to show us the correct bridge or else we're going to die. He brushes my hand off of him, dropping his staff to the side in the process. I grab his wrist and try to pull him forward. He remains solidly planted on the bridge, with more strength than I anticipated given his hazy state. Lemonade rushes to my side and hastily tosses the guide over his shoulder. He turns to me with a dire look. We need to run. We're so close that we may be able to find the shore without him. We can trust his word as he is regardless. Yeah, well, I'm starting to think that we made lots of grievous errors. The bridge below us begins to tremble and all I can do is nod. The both of us start to sprint across the bridges with the guide quietly slung over Bemele's back. Not too much progress is made before the shaking morphs into an urgent shuddering and sinking. Despite the bridge starting to disappear below, we keep running until there is no more bridge left across. Ugh, I try desperately to tread water but my armour wears me down in this dense fluid. Inevitably my strength is quickly sapped away. I don't sink so much as plummet down into the lake. The painful fighting burning in my lungs takes a few minutes to subside. Then I slip into unfeeling nothingness. F this game keeps kicking me! Again and again and again! It's like, I, I, what do I need to do? How do I get over here with more than one person alive with us? Oh, in this instance, this playthrough, how do I get through it all? I guess keeping the medicine away from the guide was not the right solution. But if you only let him take half a dose as he normally does, we still lose somebody at the narrow bridge part. Somebody always falls. Somebody always falls. Like... No, wait, hang on. If we go back to this point where he's got the medicine... What if I don't say anything? Does he just take that as a, me saying yes or not? Yep, lack of resistance. Same thing. So that's no different. Um, give him his medicine. His expression immediately falls when I say this. He stares down at the bottle in his hands dejectedly. I sigh. I don't enjoy dashing his hope of not being completely at the mercy of the guide. However, this reckless behaviour is more likely to get all of us killed. Well, what a surprise, it did. He cannot carry a man for this entire journey. I'm aware that you have good intentions, but having a mutiny on our guide is going too far. Considering the state he is in, it's possible that his mind is clouded already because of the pain. What if he is no longer able to keep his eyes open after a while? If the guide cannot take care of himself, then he won't be of assistance to anyone. Actually, very, very good point. Although he did manage to stay conscious up until the point when we had to put him down last time. Bemele scans me and I can tell that he still has reservations over my argument. I can't blame him. The guy will not give up on his own life over some pain. Yet I stand by my reasoning and look at him firmly. Bemele looks at me and then back down at the bottle. The others start to grow nervous over our battle of wills. Hand back the medicine. The guide won't leave us behind as long as we follow diplomatically. We all must cooperate. We focus our sight back on the guide. Realising he's become the centre of attention, he haltingly gives us a nod. Bemele clicks his tongue a few times before doing as I asked and handing the vial back to its owner. He feebly accepts the glass and uncaps it, downing half the vial without wasting any more time. I feel confident that the guide will continue to show us the way, However, Bemele starts to grow frustrated when the guide does not immediately speak. 
pressing his heel into the wooden board below in anticipation. And here we go, there we go, this is the same. The same. We must continue now. And we'll only get one person over, as always. There we go, and away we go again. Yep, already limping. So this is the other thing I was thinking. But if he takes the full vial, he's going to lead us the wrong way again, right? And we're still going to have the wobbly bridge scenario. That's no different. That's not going to be any different. Can I... Maybe... So let's try. Oh. Oh, wow. The guide stops in front of us. The view is obscured from my vantage point, but I realise that he puts a hand in his pocket and pulls out the vial. He brings it to his lips and swallows the rest of what's inside. Wow! He didn't take any convincing, but perhaps already being half dosed made him a little bit more uh, amenable to suggestions. Okay, he then calmly tucks the empty bottle inside of his cloak. Without another word, he continues on his path. It is unusual for him to take suggestions so easily. The pain must have truly been a hindrance. Yeah, but he, we're probably going to have the same issue. He's going to take us to the dead end and we're going to die, right? We all continue our journey in silence. I watch the guy from behind and notice that slowly but surely his steps are improving. His limp becomes less and less noticeable. I feel a small wave of relief wash over me. Yeah, well, you know, every time we've had waves of relief wash over us, it's soon been swiftly followed by the waves of the lake. So I wouldn't get too excited. Brisker pace. Not a word's exchanged. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go again. And it's going to be the same. Yep. I will stay in the middle. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. It makes no difference. I can take the front. Unless... Let's see. Yep, it's gone again. We fucked again. Again! We need to makes no sense. Makes no sense. It makes no sense. There's nothing... How do we... It makes no sense. It doesn't matter who we send. It doesn't matter. We lose somebody either way. So you do this, and then he dies. Yep. And you... Say Should nothing. Keep going? And Lou dies. Oh no. Yep, because he was dosed up. He took us off the edge again. Uh, took us to the broken bridge again. Okay. Right. I'm going to have to start from scratch again. It's, it's, it's concerning to me, because there are... There are three, three bonus events. Um, we got that first event because yeah, we've we made it alive a few times, but oh, oh, we've got so much more thinking to do. I have taken every possible route across that second half of the the, of the bridges, the second night. Um. I'm going to have to tackle the first night again. There has to be a way, some different, some difference when you get to that island. There's got to be something you can do somewhere. Surely. Maybe we have to lose the guide. <laughs> get rid of the guide and then fumble through on our own. I don't know. I just don't know. I'm so perturbed. But I can't. I, oh, we haven't got time to figure it out now. We're going to have to figure it out next time. I'm going to do a little bit of... I'm not doing loads of off-camera stuff because I don't like doing stuff off off when I'm not recording. But I will try and set up a few different pathways and have a few saves ready so we've got ready different ways to go. So I'll do like the intro and maybe select some slightly different options at the beginning and see if we can set up a couple of different beginnings maybe. And then see what happens. I, I, it's like, I, but I'm just stumped. But stumped but determined. I'm determined. I'm stubborn enough to keep doing this until we get somewhere. I've played this game so much. And we are still at a loss here. We've still failed more times than we've succeeded. And we have not succeeded any differently than we have. Who have we made it over with? I think we've lost Margaret every time, haven't we? I don't think we've made it over with Margaret yet. We've made it over with Bemelay and we've made it over with Lou, but we haven't made it over with Margaret. That could even be different. Even just getting over with just Margaret, but she always ends up... Wait, no, we can get over with Margaret, can't we? Do I still have a save point somewhere where we can choose to uh, save Margaret? 
Shit, I can't remember. Hang on. Oh, is this all with Bemele? I can't remember. It's, it was I never should have stayed. Okay, we'll do this. I can't remember if this is Bemele or Margaret. I know you don't want anything. Oh, it's the one with Bemele, so that's not what I really wanted. Of course you can I didn't Um I think August the eleventh is Okay, we can save Margaret here. We'll do the loo thing again here. Oh, wait a minute! We got to the lantern bit, and Lou... I didn't throw the lantern, but Lou whistled. Wait, hang on a second. Lou effortlessly jumps out of the tree he was hiding in and lands on the sand. He stands alone and undefended. His face is serious. What is he thinking? I frantically look between the group of Nixie and Lou. The creatures are still as statues as their fixation on Lou never wavers. I wonder if a part of their minds is telling them that the opportunity looks too good to be true. Lou, apparently unsatisfied with their hesitance, takes a step even closer while speaking angrily. Do you want someone or not? The spell keeping them in place breaks and some of the Nixie abandon the guy to slink towards Lou. I see standing as well and rush over to Lou, lantern in hand. Wait! Oh, he wants them to get closer, right? His shout stops me in my tracks, and amazingly, the prowlers halt their advance as well. I had not realised they were such cautious creatures. Watch the guide. I'll be back by the fire soon. Despite my worries for him, I understand. He's not in complete danger and we do need to protect our way across. I believe that Lou is capable of handling the situation. So he's clearing the bridge as well as saving the guide? I look to our lead. Even fewer Nixie are around him as they all curiously inspect Lou. The guy glances away from them for a single heartbeat to make eye contact with me. And then it's over. He wordlessly swings his staff out at the Nixie still near his side. The tense silence becomes filled with screeching hisses as they retreat back to the water, freeing the guide of any immediate threats. Unaffected and without appreciation, he gives an order to Lou. Return to the fire. Wow. Lou scoffs at his response, mumbling a reply of his own. I was going to. That was the first time I'd seen him speak directly to the guide. It's doubtful he would have been able to make it out without, with the distance between them, but Lou looks satisfied enough. His relaxed state is premature as the Nixie are deeply focused on him now, ready to attack at the first opening. Lou takes a few deep breaths as he steals himself to run. Without a hint of warning, I burst forward as soon as he starts to move. The Dixie leap right into the now illuminated area. Pain and panic overtake them. Lou looks over his shoulder at the sound of their hisses. He smirks lightly as he watches the prowlers abandon the chase and flee. After returning back near the fire and bathing in its light, he faces me fully and gives me a small, shy wave. Oh, Lou. I put my free hand over my chest at the sight, glad that he's safe. I don't truly have the luxury to think much of what just happened, however. The guide is fine. There are no Nixie in his immediate vicinity, but they're beginning to re-emerge already. We're not out of this yet. Gripping my lantern, I watch over everything and everyone in sight vigilantly. I'm saving this one. Now, here's my reasoning. My reasoning is... That was different for a start. We didn't have to sacrifice our lantern, and the and the guy didn't have to get hurt. If we have Lou with us on the island, he'll do that. That's interesting. But I don't know how much of a difference it will make for the second part of our journey. Because if we have three people there, and still only one lantern between the three of us, we can't spread out without putting someone in danger. That's another issue that we'll have to cope with. But now I'm thinking this might be my opportunity to get Margaret over with us, though, which is the only thing I haven't done yet. Um, so we'll do that. Okay, cool. I did find another route. It might lead us to the same old crappy deaths. But that was different. We got a different scene. I had to just muck about a little bit with the scenarios. 
All right. Okay. Not terrible then. It opens up a, like, a, a little crack of a new pathway. And I'll take that. Okay, my goodness. We'll be back with Laker Voices very soon. Wherein I probably do have to start again from the beginning at some point. But right now, we, at least we can start with this next time. And then we'll see what happens. Okay. All right. If you want to play Laker Voices yourselves, as always, that link is in the description below. Go and check this game out. It's such a wild ride. And it's equally infuriating heartbreaking and yet also wonderful just the way it's written and the way it's acted and just the story itself is just oh brilliance pure brilliance uh okay if you have any of the game recommendations for me or just want a bit of a general chit chat you can have added in the comments below you can catch me on twitter and that's it i'll do it i have been mikey Mly, and i hope you all have yourselves a fantastic morning afternoon evening or night and i will see you all next time around Life it out.